Hi, this is Lori Jill, and in today's tutorial, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to clone painting within Photoshop. Clone painting is actually using cloner brushes, which are nothing more than the mixture brushes with certain properties on them. In the introduction of the cloud, Photoshop, I think they started in CS6 and then above, there is an action now included in the default actions called the clone painting actions. I'm going to open up my action screen so you can see it. Under default actions at the very bottom, it says mixture brush clone painting setup. That is what we're going to use to create a quick painting in Photoshop. I'm going to run this action really quick and then we'll explain. The dialog box that comes up just gives you a couple warnings. First of all, it's going to flatten any layers, so you want to start with a flat layer. When you're working with your brushes, your mixture brushes, and this particular action, you want to make sure sample all layers is not checked. It, besides the fact that it locks up your processor, it will not allow this action to work correctly when you're painting. I go over a lot more of this stuff in more detail in my other videos, but I just want to get you started in this uh, fun way to create and understand what's going on. So I'm going to close down these groups real quick and explain them to you. What it does is it takes your image, it puts it on the top layer, it calls it, it renames it, and calls it reference. That is a reference for you as the painter so you can see the color and the lines. You are not painting from that photo. Just understand that. You are painting that photo but not the pixels aren't actually coming from that layer. They're coming from each one of these layers that it sets up. So it gives you a background which is a white canvas. It then gives you this underpainting layer and here is the layer that you're actually painting from. That is where the pixels are at. You cannot see it I'm going to turn this, you cannot see the pixels there. It's got 1% of the image on this layer right here. But I'm going to turn the reference off. And I doubt you can, maybe you can on your screen. There's a little cloud kind of of it, of the, um, the barn there. And if I would continue to duplicate these clone painting layers, you would see more and more of that image come forward as the 1% would build and build and build. So that is actually what you're painting from. The first thing that I do when I open up this action is I go to the very top one. I hit Control or Command J and duplicate it. I rename that No. That means do not paint on that. That's my safety net. So sometimes when I'm doing paintings with this action, I will have 10 or 15 of these clone painting layers. I cannot have another one if I don't always keep one as a last resort because you cannot delete on the layer you can't erase on that layer you're actually erasing pixels so when you're inside that group painting if you mess up you literally need to get rid of the whole group and copy and do another group each one of these groups are exactly the same there's no difference just how you uh, paint on each layer makes the difference so the next thing I do is on I'll make a, a copy of the underpainting layer so command or control J and then I call that test this is nothing more than for me to test brushes if I don't know what brush I want to use. You don't have to do that if you already know what brush you want to paint with. On that test layer, I can then play with some paint brushes. When I'm doing that, I turn off the reference. I find it very hard to see what my brush is doing. If the reference picture is on, I don't see the brush strokes on the canvas quite as well. And in the end, when you produce this piece of artwork, you won't have that reference photo there. So you really want to see how the brush is interacting with the white canvas below it. So I turn that off. Then you can use Mixture Brush. You want to get your Mixture Brush out and the Mixture Brush adds these properties at the top. To make a brush a cloner, there's only a couple settings that you need to pay attention to. First one is right here. This box has to be transparent. All that means is that you are not picking up any extra paint or pigment to add to the canvas you are going to simply paint from what's already there on the canvas. And although you can't see it, it the way that this action set up, it paints at 100% of what's there, not at this light, you know, white kind of look. The next thing, so that, that needs to be unchecked. I always keep my brush clean, even though it doesn't matter when you're not adding pixels to it. I just most of the time keep that uh, checked, unless I'm really doing a messy painting. Over here, these settings are what's important. The load mix and flow doesn't matter unless you have pixels being added to your brush. So it really doesn't matter what you set those at. The wetness does. So at 100% wetness, it means my canvas is really wet. And as I brush with strokes on here, I am on the test layer, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to end up throwing that one away. I'm really pulling pixels around, as you can see, because the canvas is really wet. If I don't want it to be that wet, I just 
take it down into really low and then as I do the same strokes you can see I can't I'm pulling more of the detail from it and I'm not able to pull the pixels around because the canvas isn't wet so you just have to kind of play with that until you find a setting that you like if it's not very wet though you end up what happens is I'm gonna just paint a couple more strokes you end up getting too much of a photographic reference and the point is to be a painting so definitely when you do your underpainting you want the canvas to be pretty wet and you want to mush up, mush up the colors as much as you can so I'm going to just explain really quick I have in here on my brushes right now that was the soft oil pastel that comes with Photoshop you can reset your brushes and get the basic brushes back that come with Photoshop and you can pick any of these brushes as long as you're on the mixture brush and you make sure those properties on the option bar are set like I said so for me I like to use tool presets I explained so much more of this in my other videos so this is just an introductory and hopefully you'll watch the other ones so that you get a better understanding but Photoshop comes with some default uh, presets and I like the dry media tool presets that it comes with and I'm going to particularly use the soft pastel down here opaque it's one of my favorites and I already know that I like this one oops sorry I need to show you that was good that it happened so I can show you I just control Z took that away it by default that tool preset when I click on it although it's a mixture brush it comes out with color loaded so for me to change it into what I want to use I have to get rid of the color I have to give it some wetness and I'll generally do my underpainting with it at about 40 percent and like I said these controls will not matter make sure that sample all layers is unchecked I need to save this this is an erodible tip and so it, if I don't save that in here I won't have a way to get back to the exact settings quickly so I'm going to simply hit no, new tool preset and mixture brush tool erodible flat yes we'll just put that right there at the bottom so I know that's the one that I'm going to paint with on my underpainting and I can get back to it very quickly so now I'm going to delete that test layer I do not need it I'm going to go ahead and open my underpainting and on the underpainting I'm going to keep the canvas zoomed out I do not want to be tight I just need to lay down color and I want to do this let's just do a stroke and make sure I'm not too wet yeah that's pretty good so I'm going to just quickly lay down some color and make an underpainting and I'm not going to do the whole thing because this is I teach that more in the others but I'm going to just show you how to get started with this this image was already enhanced uh, with color and detail in camera raw before I brought it in that's my process for painting I like to add my I like to paint in bright bold colors different people have different color palettes but that's how I do it so I'll saturate and do a lot of those things in camera raw before I even start painting an image so you can see it's pretty mushy which is really what an underpainting does you can be as big as you want with your background uh, the sky obviously and so you just fill it all in on the underpainting like I said I'm not going to do that I just want to show you this process and give some detail here to bring it in okay then you can go to the next layer intermediate strokes and then I'll zoom in usually two or three clicks I'll get just a little tighter I'll take my brush and I'll take it down about two or three clicks now maybe more just depends on the brush you're using and then I'll paint intermediate strokes so as you can see it's and then I um, get a little more as I move up in the painting I get a little bit more detailed with my brush strokes I pay a little more attention to the direction I'm moving in than I do with the underpainting the underpainting I'm just laying down a lot of color and as I move up I pay a little more attention to the way that my strokes are getting laid down on the canvas and I'm just doing this very quickly for the sake of you to understand how to do this I like the pastel because I uh, in real media when I would draw I, I liked ones that I could blend with 
and kind of smear color and bring out detail as I wanted by just getting a little bit harder and less smeary. So this tends to be a brush that I like to work with. Okay, so I think you get the idea of the intermediate strokes. Let me move up to the detail strokes. So then I get even, I go in even tighter and then I get my brush and I go even smaller with my brush. So I'm still using the same brush, same settings. If I wanted it to be less wet, I could change that at this point because I may not want to pull the pixels quite as much, but really if you just zoom in and you get your brush smaller, it's going to do what you want it to do. So now I can come in here and I can be really careful with my strokes. This is, some people like to be messier painters. I wish I could get where I could be messier and have less control. It must be my photographic sense that keeps me still very tight on things, but. So then you can come in and just brush in. You don't have to brush the whole thing. That's the point of a painting. You need to allow your eyes to fill in the blanks and create the image and don't give it all to the viewer. Be careful with text. Uh, I find that I I'm just want to show this for demonstration purposes, but anywhere there's text, the eye will go. So be careful if you really want to have a full word there. And although I'm zoomed in very close, you and you can see how messy it still is and it makes you really want to refine this and go oh I need to fix this this and this um, I'm just paying attention to I'm bringing out detail but I'm also paying attention to the brush strokes and I want to see some of this nice canvas uh, texture that is added to this pastel brush I can pick what detail on the building I want to bring in like this with my strokes this is the part that I spend a lot of time on. I get that underpainting down very quickly within like a couple minutes. The intermediate stroke, maybe five to ten, and then this is hours when I'm actually bringing in detail, deciding. And it's not just about bringing back detail because I don't want it to become a photograph. It's more about deciding how I want the brush strokes to present the detail. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out so you can see. So it's still, it's very painterly, but I'm getting, I may get too much detail. And so what happens is I go, oh, I think that's too much detail in here. If I don't have this no layer, then I have nothing to, I can't go into this one and delete the pixels. I can't, I could maybe make the brush bigger and mush it up a little bit more. But the only way I have a safe net is with this no layer that I will never paint on. I will actually just dump that one at the end, get rid of it when I'm done with my painting. I just get rid of it. But I keep this one there simply so that I can control or command J, make a new copy. I'm going to rename that one and I'll do, and I just name it whatever I want. But if I want to keep organization so I know where I'm at, I'll just say detail sign. So I've named it and so what I'll do there is just I'm gonna reorder it open it up and now it's a new blank canvas and if I think that I have too much detail on this sign I can just refine it however I want to I'm opening my brush up again and I can mush it back up you can do that on the layer but more if you're trying to bring in more detail you need that extra one so okay I hope that gets you started so you can play with um, some of the painting in Photoshop and if you want to learn more about this like I said I have other tutorials that I'm uh, I have up and I'm working on so you can learn more about it and hopefully I'll see you in one of those thank you